Hi, how are you? Good. I have made it. Sorry. That's okay. What? You're the only person here, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So sorry to hear about Anson. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. It, you know, he's. Uh, he is a very difficult situation, and um, I admire how he handles it. I'll leave it at that. Oh, good. I don't want to say too much on his behalf, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know Rashad's busy, um, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you'd like to talk about today, but there's unlimited. We could talk all day long about stuff. Yeah. So I, I'll let you kind of. Yeah. You know. Well, I don't know what you, what you have in mind. I guess why don't we get into some of the NeurIP stuff? I think it would be good for some of the people in the group to see some, what went on at NeurIPS or some of the highlights. Uh, and then we have the uh, blog or the note uh, interactive note taking thing that you've set up where you can, okay. you know, and then maybe go over some of the stuff in Slack if you can share your screen for Slack and we can go through it. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff, and let me let me look also at. I don't know. Are, I don't know if we're recording now. Or are you going to? Yeah, speak? yeah, I'm, we're recording. Okay. Oh, actually, the wrong camera. I have my leftover. I put on my blazer for a little bit <laughs> uh, today, and I was like, you know what? I'll put that on now because it will complete my disheveled look. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, the Google document is basically. A hundred pages now. Wow! So that worked out. Honestly, that worked out really well because um, I think it's the most coherent. Um, I, I really like that setup. I think I know you added some things. Um, I don't know if Rich was able to add much, but just having everything in one space there, as opposed to in Slack. Um, this stuff, is, I, I, I kind of use Slack as like call outs and highlights. Um, like, hey, this is really good. And, you know, there was a really funny joke last night. Um, and, and a specific mention that, you know, like, like the Yashua Benjo thing that um, Yashua's question for Tony Zador on Thursday night, I think it was was like pinpointing a precursor to much of the work we're doing right recently about you know developmental AI and critical periods and developmental freedom and it's like it, it was such a there's so there's so much um i'm really glad i was able to go to this this uh the event and spend as much time there as I could, because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to, honestly. Right. But um, from, a, from a positive, like, uh, from a positive reinforcement sense and a negative reinforcement sense. <coughs> Excuse me. I, uh, I've taken away so much from the event. Um, relative to understanding, uh, like kind of how I'm, I'm framing myself and some of my work and things that I want to do, um, because it's just the 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 best and sometimes worst thing about a neuro IPS maybe, which I, I don't have much to say once I've ever been there, but is that there's just so much stuff like like the quite like the blog post board like oh is is neuro is neuro being too big and it's like I see where that that actually comes from because unfortunately for me. Uh, and also, like, shout out to Charlotte and the Lobster's Web Cafe. I'm going to talk about that for a little bit, too. I think that went well. Um, but even outside of that, uh, I, and, and had, I, had I more thoroughly looked at the schedule, and I think they switched some things around. But what Friday was, like, completely, I was quadruple booked for stuff. Mm -hmm. If you include Charlotte's Web Cafe, Philosopher's uh, Web Cafe, I, I, there was I was quadruple booked for stuff that was really important to me, and 
it was just, so Friday was this day of just everything on 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 so many levels. And you know, other days weren't as weren't as concentrated in that sense. But that's okay. Um, that's how it goes. But but it was just it's just a bunch of stuff. So yeah. Well, well, thank you for putting me in touch with uh, Charlotte and the Web Cafe group. Uh, I enjoyed that talk quite a bit. So giving it and um, I mean, you know, I had a couple. Well, there weren't as many people. I mean, there may be about five people, so it's probably about right. But uh, yeah, I think that was a very good experience. Looks like I just look like currently at. I'll, I'll share my screen so I can do that. Um, it looks like I pull up the workshops. For, today's the last day of the conference, basically, and it's, it's, I think entirely all workshops. Um, I don't know if there's even a closing ceremony or anything like that. Huh. Um, but yeah, they have the workshops today. Well, like uh, if you like, I went to the schedule. And, um, like, this is Friday, so I kind of basically end here. And then I went to the work, I clicked workshops, and yeah, um, the workshops are on there, yeah. So, I mean, I would check out meta learning. I pardon me, I want to look at this too. I, I might have time to look at it directly, but that goes until oh, oh, this is Friday, not Friday. This, yeah, it's Friday, but I think if you go down maybe Saturday or. Oops, I had the wrong one. No, yeah. They have the same okay. one. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, um, so starting off the day, algorithmic fairness. Oh. Um, they have had so many good workshops on ethical things at, at this, this moment. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have a whole... I could talk for an hour about that, um, so I'll try not to. Um... <laughs> I'll probably check this one out. Learning needs to come and draw algorithms. That looks cool. Um, obviously, all this stuff is cool, but just think that relevant to me in the lab. Uh, developing world, improving resilience. Um, that would go all the resistance that I had yesterday. First learning. I can't believe. Oh, this is uh, Jeremy. Oh, okay. Um, one of Jeremy's, Jeremy's involved with this somewhere, I believe. Um, so I have to actually kind of check that out. Um, uh, yeah, um, but, um, anyway, I'm, I'm kind of doing a quick and sloppy tour of this right now. Cooperative AI also, there's a ton of good stuff today. Wow. I didn't even... Get to, um, I don't even know where I shared. There it is. <laughs> Share <There> is. <laughs> your presentation. Uh, that's, that's, there, damn, there's so much stuff that, that it's impossible today. Yeah, it's uh, impossible to keep it all. But they do the, the live streaming, or they do the live streaming and they have it recorded for some of them. So at least there's, that. I saw some yeah. of the uh, workshops from Monday on uh, line and, you know, it's, uh, they have a nice setup. They have the slides on one side, the person on the other, and you know you can watch uh, <laughs> watch them give the talk as they show their face talking. And so, yeah, I thought that there were some really good things. The one that you uh, shared on the uh, developmental robotics was a pretty good talk. Um, oh yeah, yeah. The so, baby minds. Maybe mine probably is like the if there was one thing to take away, it's probably that that whole workshop. Like if you like for the lab, yeah. uh, um, for the for the meta -bra meta brains and for um, you know um, representational brains of phenotypes and 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 uh, and and to logics and cognition features too, like that. Um, you know that was some. The, the panel was awesome. Also, the panel for um, the knowledge uh, to to representation um, that was that was really good. Um, but it, 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 you know, there's this like I don't know. I think I kind of at least five 
really important workshops that that are up there today that are kind of stuffed into the last day of Europe. So yeah, you know, <laughs> that's that's where it's at. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks very good. Uh, now I know uh, Rashab and you and you know were uh, attending NeurIPS from the group. I don't think anyone else was. I was tuning in here and there, but um, so this document that you've generated, the shared document. Let's actually pull that up. Um, I, you want me to pull it up or? Um, I have it. Uh the best best way to organize all my stuff here so uh, I'll do it I'll do it like this um, yeah, I'll show my screen here also forgive me I'm having a little bit of problems with just getting my connection so I may if I get really bad I'll just it seems to be fine if I just exit and enter the room again yeah so if, if it looks really shaky let me know or like yeah. If I tune in, I'll tune out. The worst thing about just Steve that I see so far is like, there's no real. Some people kind of give you an indication of your connection when I'd be working. But, um. Uh, so if, if I notice, it won't be until I notice that and I notice something happened. Um, but I don't know. Let yeah. me know uh, what, that, what that is in the case. Okay. All right. Um, so I have the doc. The doc's been open all day on my. I made an upgrade to my computer's RAM recently, and that made so much of this possible because I just had so much stuff open. And um, yeah, here we go. Um, oh, that's not it. Here it is. Okay. Um, here is the dock, and there's. A billion ways to look at it. I'll look at the sidebar. I think you can see the sidebar here, right? Yeah. Um, what I tried to do, I wish it was a little bit more extended, actually. What I tried to do is originally I kind of just drop in events to the sidebar that um, looked pertinent, like populate, like almost like uh, bullet points. And these are, these are obviously, you know, like, I don't know, H2s or H3s here. Um, and it's sort of like, a, you know, general content. It's like Tuesday, Wednesday. I put all the posters. I mean, every 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 workshop or whatever has other post sessions. So I don't really, I kind of, I don't know, that maybe shouldn't be there. But um, there's, uh, this is fairly organized. And then I do a blog. I put some of my, these are essentially my key points of interest prior to, like in this midday Friday, um, and I'll write up something about this for sure, um, but this doesn't include like the second half of Friday, or all the stuff Saturday, um, but we'll be, we'll be putting something together for this um, uh, later, but, but there's so much the stuff and it is um it is uh 97 pages right now and it could be much more actually like i took notes that were on here i'm really proud of um uh well some of the, some of the notes that i was able to get I'm, I'm very happy to have so i don't know i don't know how you'd like to go do you want to try to do this chronologically? Do you want me to pick some highlights? Do you have things that you'd like to look at and, and talk about that you see interesting and see if I have any notes on them here? Or what would you well, like to do? Why don't, we, why don't we go... So the the outline on the left is something that you create out of the stuff that you put in on the right? Or how... Yeah, it's all yeah. like headers. Like, like, the, like, the, like this Sunday, it's just an H1 and it's here. Okay. And this is, you know, this is an H3. Like probably should be in HTML, so you just you change the header manually, or do you put in HTML as a tag? Or oh no, um, I mean this is this is this is the the ease of Google Docs is like I just oh. if I if it's a if it's a you know um, it just it it shows up here oh, as part so of the the view uh, show document outline. Oh okay, 
Yeah. Uh, so it's quite comfortable in that SUV. Actually, what I might be able to do is, um, I think this will still work. I'll put this here. Pack it on that side, yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Yeah, that works. Um, just so we can pull up stuff over here, or potentially have Twitter open here. Um, so yeah, how would you like? I can I can dive in any which way. But, yeah, um, yeah. Why don't we go through kind of the highlights uh, that you that you see in there, and and just you know we can walk through chronologically, but you can pick out highlights to mention. Yeah, um, I'm trying to figure out. I'm look at, let me look also at. I'm kind of more familiar with the. Um, question over here. Let's see the schedule. Yeah, the main schedule. Uh, that's pretty good. So I missed the opening ceremony, which kind of sucks because I think there was some really important stuff. Uh, in the first part of Neurops, there was uh, some really good um, panels and workshops about ethics in particular. Like the Black and AI workshop, um, I really highlight that. Obviously, there were many other things too, but uh, like for early conference, I would highlight the Black and AI workshop. Um, and, on, and the doc over here on the right, uh, on the left, I mean, which is kind of annoying like this. Uh, I kind of, I try to chunk, put in some stuff on Sunday. Like, there's a, a bunch of interesting workshops and, and specific talks with them in here. Um, but, yeah, for those who weren't aware or weren't able to, um, let me get this out of the way. Um, um, for those who weren't <clears throat> aware, um, there's a big, <coughs> excuse me, there's a big, um, one of the biggest things right now in, in, in sort of machine learning, um, AI and, and sort of the bigger, I don't know, big news, I guess in general. And specifically regarding ethics is um, uh, Timnit Jibru, which hopefully I'm saying properly, even I've heard it a bunch of already, um, getting fired or resigning from um, uh, from Google, and she she was already scheduled to be at Neuro IPS. And, um, what is the rest of my notes on this? I have a whole bunch more notes here. Kind of weird. Um, uh, she was already at, um, NeurIPS before this happened. And this is a, her participation in the, the black in, in AI was great. Um, and she also, uh, had other things here. There was there was a cumulative thing from the kind of resistance AI and you know all, many of the other sort of ethics workshops were was this document which is a bunch of blanks. I'm not going to go through them all, but it's kind of mentioned this document is here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Your screen isn't sharing anymore, by the way. Oh no. I don't know if that's... <laughs> um, I don't know why that was. Let's see. Yes. I'll put this over here so I can see it, I guess. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. Um, uh, let's go through. There we go. I think that, that works kind of. Um, this doesn't look so great. Um, so the whole Black and Eye workshop was really great. Um, You can, you can look at this screen here um, and, and look at the URL is, is Black AI 2020. 
Versalna app up here. And we'll, I'll, I'll be making a, um, actually, you can see a draft here already. Um, that's, uh, you know, and a quick ethics selection of like links and stuff from the, from the panel, uh, from, from the whole conference, um, which, which has these here. Um, the resistance AI workshop was great. Um, we'll look at that, uh, later. Um, there's the resource document, which is actually over here. I think I was trying to show this on my screen share didn't work, but there's a, there's a big collection of links that's, that's semi curated, um, by people who attended it. Uh, the whole conference and some other links that are that are really um, uh, interesting ways to, to engage on these topics. Um, I'm going to put tweets and notes down there later, but um, disable is then where's the data for Black Lives? It's actually really interesting um, and, and far reaching. Um, and then Latinx, Black and I, no tech for ICE, um, but. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, anyway, <clears throat> there's there's quite a bit there's quite a bit to, say, to be to be said here. Um, my screen sharing setting is kind of not working out as I wanted to. Um, nevertheless, um, there's quite a bit from that, um, and and I I probably will come back to that as I keep leaving the things. Uh, one of my personal uh, favorites, which I don't think I put in here yet. Um, uh, was uh, Dr. Amaro's talk. Uh, his I really need to be scratched here. Um, from on Amaro, I believe. Yeah. Uh, he had a really, really, really good talk um, at the Black and AI workshop. He had a fire side chat on machine learning, thought, social engineering, and race. Um, and he he was basically doing, um, again, I, I don't, it, weren't, it wasn't a, I don't think, I forget if there were, were there presentations? Let me look at Slack. Let me see what's in Slack here. Um, I think it, maybe I put it in here. Um, but there was some really good, uh, deep cuts into the history of uh, machine learning. Like he was making these really, yeah, oh, that's the one we already seen. He was making these really good deep cuts into, um, uh, like Leibniz. He was talking about Leibniz and, and the, 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 the the culture and times that was forming when Landis was 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 making, you know, contributing to Catholics, contributing to these works of, you know, STEM and, and mathematics, but he was looking at it from a social cultural perspective and, and what was being acceptable at the time. And and there's obviously more, you know, there, there's hard lines to take. Oh well, you know, and, and all these advances in mathematics where you know have a racial undertones of them, and that's something to to consider and debate. Um, but I think it's really important to look at, you know, what what was the um, what was the here we go what what was the underlying um, here we go uh, factors that were contributing to a lot of. Oh, what was going on as the technology was being created? He mentioned Latinx, he mentioned um, Malthus, uh, with his Malthusian ideas about population and and who who um, who who was who was who should be getting the bad end of the deal, basically, and why. Um, and and he went. It was a really deep dive into the history and, and historical context and. Doing a terrible job of uh, representing it here. I really liked also the shout out. I really liked. Um, I connected with a lot, a lot. Um, I really liked her talk. Um, she did a really good talk. I don't know if I put it up in here. Um, she did a very good talk on uh, visualizing concepts, which I'm following up with her on later. 
Um, I don't think I have any notes easily accessible for that. Uh, but that that was that was a, a technical highlight from the session that I liked. Um, but then this one also was really good. Um, and I don't have a lot. Um, his upcoming publication, it's not really easy to find. But his upcoming book on, on essentially the same topic as... Um, up, 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 as as um, this. Uh, I wonder, whoops. Anyway, I'm, this is probably a terrible visual experience, so um, I'll, I'll just move on for the time being. Um, the Black and I workshop was great. Um, I forget when the Queer and AI workshop was that also had a lot of good things. Um, not just like for specific, uh, you know, groups of interest, but also looking at like the, the, the core foundations. And I think that's one of the takeaways is that you know these aren't these aren't just like oh well I'm 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 a a minority I'm I'm a um, I'm a, I'm I'm of a particular group, so therefore I have to look at this group in order to look. I, I, I'm much more encouraged the viewpoint of um, this is this is actually what I mentioned here. Um, Jeremy next thing on on, on uh, later on today. Um, I'm much more encouraged, as I was saying, the viewpoint of um, I think some I think these are a little bit out of order on the left side, so I'm sorry. Because I'm trying to find my stuff here, I'm much more encouraged the viewpoint of um, understanding that when you get to the foundations of, of how you know machine learning and AI and and and, and its its predecessors is pro it's 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 what has contributed to those things. Like it's really important if you want to understand. How some of the decisions have been made, um, where they come from, and and certain narratives don't have access to those things as easily as others. Um, in part because it's harder to see from certain vantage points. Um, so uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, I feel like I've lost. I feel like there's something here that that's missing in the organization of these notes on on Monday, uh, so I'm I'm a little bit embarrassed about what that is, um, but yeah, um, this this is a bunch of like scraps from apparently different things here. Um, let me see. You can't escape hyperparameters. That was one of the key talks here. Did I have? Anything specifically about it? Right there, yeah. Didn't mind the talk. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll mention that. Let's see what, what time it already is. It's already 10.30. Uh, so I might, I might kind of try to quickly... I, I, might, I might try to do more of a highlight um, because we can spend a lot of time on... Um, we could spend a lot of time on, on uh, Thursday night. The highlights, the highlights to come back to are definitely this talk. Um, Thursday night, Anthony Tony Zador, who I, who I believe I saw at another event, and I forgot where it was. You know, apparently, it wasn't I, I, I see a lot or I clear. Uh, but this was this was a really good talk, um, and I took a lot of notes on this. Um. um We'll, we'll come back to that for sure. Everything on Friday, uh, I might I might quickly go to the resistance AI stuff um, to get the ethics um, things kind of in the first part of our talk here today in, in the Gisty call Gisty. And then we can spend a lot of time on, on the Baby Minds workshops. Um, and we'll like this knowledge representation reasoning workshop. Um, and we can spend the, the bulk of the time we have on these things for sure. Okay. Um, I also, I had mixed feelings about 
the invited poster lecture, The Real Revolution in AI, because I felt a little bit mm, dismayed, but then I felt very good about it, ultimately. Uh, and I'll get into that. Um, but yeah, uh, also, I didn't even mention this. Um, I, Tuesday was was the original thing I was super um, excited about, which was uh, was it Tuesday or was it Wednesday? Actually, it was Wednesday. Um, I, I had a, I, I attended this. Uh, I think it's called a social, um, but um, the state of the art AI with um, I don't. Remember remember anybody's name right now, but uh, he's, he's, uh, I've reached out to this person in Discord, he's one of Joshua Tenenbaum's grad students, um, I'm like totally all over the place, and my organization is, uh, not what I wanted it to be for showing this, so, but sorry for the, uh, disruption. Things. No, I don't do that. Um, Andres, Andres Campero, uh, was the main the main talk for this. Um, or it might be Andre, Andre Campero. Um, they show this platform. Um, so the Thursday talk, this platform on Wednesday, all of Friday, um, there were, there's just so many highlights, uh, which is sort of making it hard to even boil down here. Yeah. Um, real quickly on Monday, I have highlights. Um, this is a, this is a very interesting talk at, uh, Francois Cholet, Melody Mitchell, Christian Zigadi. Um, they had some good stuff. Um, I like this. Uh, some of these diagrams are very good. Uh, Cholet is a pretty good way of talking about uh, stuff, and his slides are available here. Uh, a lot of things are still available on SlideShare. Um, this is kind of more what I was hoping my presentations to be like, more coherent. Um, but you can see kind of awkwardly what he's in the way, but you, you know, uh, it's all here. I, I, you know, all other things have slideshows. Not everything does though. Right. Uh, but I definitely highlight this. Um, <coughs> uh, they talked about the nature of abstraction. Um, uh, some, some, you know, the, one of the biggest topics in, in everything, machine learning, AI, whatever, AI used reasonably and AI used unreasonably is, is the notion of deep learning can do everything. Um, even even like in 2017 when I was at, or uh, yeah, when I was at the Triple AI Fall Symposium, the, the, joke, the joke then, three years ago, was still deep learning will save us from, from all of our problems. Um, and that's not gone away. And it's still the idea and, and some folks will this this conference is a big example of uh, many people on many different sides of that perspective. Um, so so let's looking at these uh, these things. This was quite interesting. Uh, I would I would um, carbon copy CC Anson here. I mentioned these things to him. Uh, these multitask learning and uh, lifelong learning and different different systems. Um, and this kind of comes up later in, 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 in baby minds and, and a knowledge representation of the workshops later too. Um, Melanie Mitchell kind of, you know, follow up on this perception and concepts, um, and, and, you know, her taking her concepts has been very interesting. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Um, open collaboration and ML, I don't know if I got to be involved in as much as I wanted to, uh, but it was... It was good from what I saw. Um, I think this is actually not quite what that was. That might be a wrong tell here. 
Um, oh, this is just the keynote altogether. Um, what was what was the keynote on Tuesday, Paul? I think this is you can't escape from the players. Uh, this may be inaccurate. Um, I don't know what this keynote was called. Um, did I just did someone message me on Slack right now? Um, this was a very good talk, even though I don't have it properly labeled here. Uh, homomorphic encryption. This kind of looks like... Hmm, which one is this here? I don't know. I'm going to have to pass on that, sorry. Okay. Um... Wednesday, invited talk, the real AI revolution. This was really cool, really interesting. And originally, I was like, I felt a little bit, no disrespect, I felt a little bit gimmicky about the approach of this at first because it felt like there were some conflicting things going on in this talk. One of it was sort of like this, like if you look at, um, if you look over here on the right side, this was this was Wednesday, right? Yeah. If you look over here on the right side, this is sort of the evening key. Nope. Oh, my dates are off. Um, where is it? Uh, there. Here it is. Um, it was Wednesday morning. So it was a morning keynote, and um, it's. It kind of presented as if it was, it, it felt like there were a few things going on. Like there was this part of, of I think you can kind of see here, this is one of the easiest way to see it. But um, it, it kind of started off as this, can I just do it like this? Yes, uh, so much better. Uh, um, it kind of just started off as if it was a, what is AGI and like what's the big next revolution? And let's talk about AGI. And you know, the typical thing of AGI is always, you know, two two to six decades away from whatever the present moment is, whether it was 1960, 1940, 1980, 2000, 2020, like it doesn't matter, it's always you know a certain number of decades away. You know. So there was this big there's a sort of like anti hype talk about AGI, which I'm very fine with. But then I kind of took a hard a harsh turn into um, crystals and holograms, uh, which is much more about data storage um, and using, you know, uh, using, it he, he, he kind of got into, you know, using, um, here we go, using, using machine learning to, to, to get, to extract data and whatever else. But it's kind of just like, okay, AGI, then these advanced data storage things, um, and, and you know, that, that's cool, um, and really went deep into healthcare applications, radiology. So it was sort of like unclear where things are going. But the takeaways, um, like what I remember from this was the conclusions here as listed, yes. Uh, the real AI revolution today is about how we create technology um, and, and, and kind of getting to to uh, programs that make programs, AI that makes AI, and and, and he kind of mentioned some somewhat disparate uh, connections in um, you know radiology and data storage. Okay, and yes, major challenges are there, uh, but I think one of the most useful things is real world applications drive fundamental question research. And there was this talk about Pasteur's quadrant and talking about this linear model of, you know, are you on basic research like Marie Curie or uh, I forgot who the original person was. I think it was Neil Bohr was, was the person that, and, and Pat, Pasteur's quadrant is a book. Um, it's over here. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pasteur's quadrant is a book um, that, that kind of looks at this, this issue. Okay, well, uh, basic research, 
uh, Niels Bohr, he added Marie, the speaker added Marie Curie to be more legitimate, even more basic, and more applied, and more, you know, that sense. And then you have, <coughs> you have um, Thomas Newton over here, was, you know, super applied, super good, how to, you know, all these iterations on stuff to have products you know, in light, and that's how you kind of discovered a bunch of things in the process of trying to, to find these products to, to, to market and whatnot. Um, uh, but I think this is a really interesting way to look at stuff. So he kind of broke down and just get it from this basic linear model. He went to a quadrant model. Uh, I, I had some, I had many jokes about what to put here and the no and no um, quest for application. Uh, one of them being, you know, he, he if, if pastures uh, uh, is it, sort of this use inspired basic research, which is a key term. That's the pastures quadrant. If you don't have a question, if you don't have a quest for uh, fundamental understanding, and you don't have a quest for application, and you say you're doing research, maybe that you should be in poser's quadrant uh, as, a, as a scientist or a researcher, because what are you really doing at that point? Um, so that's maybe my contribution to NERVS conference is that joke, which isn't much. Um, but uh, overall, I'm really big on the idea of the use inspired basic research and it's a great way to frame uh some of what we should be doing uh because you know basic research is great applied research is great and i realized man there are certain things i just don't want to do applied research on uh some of some of the some of the career panels are like whoa this is really interesting stuff and totally not how i want to apply my time to research uh but but there are definitely areas that there are which you got to so again um I know the first while talking about this has kind of not been that great, but um, I'll, I'll keep moving here. Any questions or ideas so far as I pull up the next thing? <clears throat> well, this is, yeah, this is pretty impressive. Um, I actually, uh, yeah, I caught a couple of them. I caught one of the ones on, I think, Tuesday, the one you, I think you showed it a little bit there, our Gardenello and Balduzzi. It's up uh, above posters on the left. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I didn't even see that. You want to talk about that at all? Yeah, so go through that a little bit. Uh, scroll through the. Okay, screen. do you want to share your screen or you want me to? Uh, you can just go through here. It's easier. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And so, so this talk was about like um, they're looking at learning from the standpoint of evolution and evolutionary programs and dynamics so they go through some of these issues they have an issue with like using tasks as a benchmark so you know you don't maybe you don't want to use tasks because like say evolution doesn't select on tasks it selects on fitness mm -hmm. and, and so uh, they, they kind of bring up a new way of thinking about uh, you know uh, benchmarks especially with populations of agents and so we deal with populations of agents here. And then he talks about mechanism design, which is basically like an incentivizing structure. So it's like game theory where you have, you know, you might have some optimization problem, but there's like some motivation behind it. It's a way to get uh, agents uh, and appeal to their self-interest and get them to do things. Uh, so they talk about that. Then they talk about game theory, which I, I love. Uh, they, they talk about... Uh, Actually, they had a, uh, they brought up an example, and I, I'm not going to present it today. I'm going to present it maybe next week. It's on uh, something called non-transitivity or intransitivity. And so if you know what the rock, paper, scissors game is, which is where you, uh, you know, you do this and you choose like a, a rock, paper, scissors as your play, and then your opponent picks the play. That game is what they call intransitive. Because there's no way to actually win the game, and no way to come up with a dominant strategy for that game. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can't really beat you every time with a certain strategy. I can only beat you based on what you play in this one turn. So, you know, there's no stable dominant strategy. So the dynamics are really interesting. And so there's a lot to say about that, and I'll talk about that later. But he talks mainly about... He, he kind of highlights this idea right here. So they've, they've actually made these rock, paper, scissors tournaments in, um, 
and you know where they actually design programs that can play this game and, and optimize the play and so it's a really interesting problem if you're interested in like uh, evolutionary dynamics uh, he also talked about game theoretic optimization so this is where you have like uh, you know you have a bunch of players and they're all optimizing their own behavior and there's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do with that um, go look down actually artificial evolution in games which is the next slide he talks about about putting this in the context of evolution and artificial evolution um, and then uh, yeah so like here he talks about how you know you can have optimization you can have partial ordering and unconstrained uh, which can lead to non-convergence. So if you map that onto a, uh, well, we've talked about our, this is a, either a fitness landscape or a gradient descent landscape, but the sort mm. of landscape thinking that we use, and you can map this to a landscape to look at the dynamics and look at the overall optimization of what's going on. So I think that's it. I'm going to go down to the yeah, so I think that's it. And then I made some notes here, and those are just kind of open notes that may or may not make sense to anyone, but there actually are some uh, sort of side references that you might want to check out. Some blog posts that, that I wrote a long time ago that, you know, are kind of relevant to that. So we might be working on something like that in the near future, something yeah. to take off on that. Okay. Yeah. Something I didn't expect to see at NERIPS, though, because it's usually something you see at A-Life or maybe at, like, uh, Evolution Conference. Oh, that's So, not... yeah. Hold on. Okay. I've been addressing my... Uh, I actually have two monitors, basically. I have a, a TV that I'm using as a monitor above this, this okay. screen. So it looks funky when I do certain things. <clears throat> but it, it works when... Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is the posters. Oh, this is a cool looking poster. I, don't, I think I put the screenshot here. Um, okay. Yeah, I, let, I, I didn't get to watch that talk, so I'd, I'd go back and digest that more, uh, like many other things here. Yeah. Um, okay, we're almost at the end of pre Thursday stuff. Um, but I'll mention this really quickly. This is uh, Andre's, oh my God, Comparo, I believe his name was. Uh, yeah. And I, I reached out to him, and I, I, uh, I doubt uh, he's watching this, but um, I will be reaching out to you. And, and he, he, re he reached out back to me and said, hey, uh, I didn't get to talk to you. And, you know, and, and, and I really forward to having a talk with him because he's he wrote a book that I could see myself of writing a very simple, like a small book on like, you know, evolution and of, of, of brains and, 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 and minds and, and um, you know, where that comes from. Uh, so he, he's very much uh, feels like someone on, on a similar path as me in that sense. And then made this. Uh, so just a shout out to the state of the art AI uh, collaborative uh, team, mostly based in Latin America. Um, but just, you can see, yeah, these interesting features here, these maps, uh, these concept maps, which are kind of new. And they have competitors. They have, you know, they have what you know, paper code and, and prototype ML and Microsoft MAG, uh, maybe with ML fast AI, uh, A minor, uh, which is this collection, you know, ways of, of, of aggregating papers and stuff like that. Um, but you can see here, you can kind of pick evolution of models and, and kind of go from here. And this is mostly. Um, you know, machine learning, computer science based. Uh, but you can you can pick out these topics here and kind of go, go you know from them. Um, you know, and you'll get some stuff over here. It's it's pretty good. Like you can get you can get some 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 critical stuff pointing out here. I'm not going to demo this pretty much from our here, but right. for instance, the things I've been talking about regarding frontier map and mapping ideas and concepts. Um, they do. There's a pretty good job of this, and 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 uh, they're, they're, they they just they literally launched uh, this week, like making this like their big their big debut. So there's a lot to do with this. There's a lot to um, 
you can join, you can add models, you can add papers, you can add concepts. Uh, it's kind of going to be kind of a crowdsourced Wikipedia like con you, know, you can add and contribute to this this big uh, framework. So uh, that's really cool. Um, and I'll probably come back to that later. And maybe I'll try to offshoot some of my own frontier map work regarding computer science stuff. Uh, to to this and maybe collaborate with them on that. We'll see, uh, or at least just be a participant in the project. We can, we can log in. And, uh, yeah. Use, use, so, use I saw you mentioned that in your uh, or in Slack, I think, and I, I was looking at it, and yeah, it looks like uh, like a, you know they have these map these uh, citation graphs is what they call them, and you know so you can get citations. And you can like see what they're connected to, maybe what's been what cited them, or use some other criterion to connect them, you know, in a network. So, what is your like? I know your idea of, uh, uh, you know, frontier maps is a little bit more descriptive. I mean, you know, it's like if you think about like a map like that, that's only kind of one aspect of your sort of vision for that. It's really more about like finding uh, you know connections or, or keeping note note keeping as part of it and everything else did you get any insights into how that might fit into your approach yeah um it's like i think this one of the one of one of the key features is this here of oh, sort of this model uh, taxonomy and, and 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 sort of model lineage um kind of thing i don't really have to show that very well on this site right now, I probably won't try to do that. Um, this, um, uh, but I think for me, what I take away from this is, you know, if I if I had if I had my entire like, if, I'm realizing that the full some of the things that I've been aspiring to do, and I'm actually gonna unshare my screen for a moment and just pop. Camera. Um, I think, I think um, I realized some of my projects like they're much more suited for like if I had a fully funded PhD in five years to devote to something, I could do I could one hundred percent do like the full version of Frontier Maps. And my question right now is. And this is something that I'm thinking about. We have a lot of things that are going to fit on the table for what's going to happen next year. Um, and in the lab, and what do I want to focus on? Um, and I don't know if that's 11 o'clock. I don't know how much more you want to talk about this, but there's, well, there's probably some good stuff on Thursday and Friday to talk about. Yeah, we can keep going, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but, but for myself, like, Frontier Maps, if I had five years to, to just flesh it out, it could, it could be done. It would take a long time, do a lot of research. But if I could do that. Um, but it would involve really getting knee deep in a lot of fields and really tracing these lens trajectories and really getting these sort of primer materials. Like there isn't there isn't like a primer or anything in this. There isn't there isn't a like there aren't gonna be essays or, or educational materials built out in 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 the state of the art AI. It's mostly gonna be from what I understand. And I mean honestly I wouldn't be surprised if some of those things come off with offshoots. Um, and what's available right now is obviously a reduced version. There isn't there's many more like features and whatever coming out that, that will make this much more robust, interesting, and all that stuff. But um, you know, um, if if I was to make a web application that would convey an important part of Frontier maps from the sake of a computer science machine learning perspective. This would pretty much be it. Like this is a really accessible. Like people, people will want to see this and use this. Like this has value. That's why it has investors and backers. And so, for <clears throat> if you're going to spend time into making something that's going to have some traction in the real world, and other people are going to use and have an immediate impact for researchers and people wanting to understand stuff. Um, there it is. Like it, it exists, and, and it's, it's a really cool take on that project. Is that you know, there's a little bit of sense of oh, I'm, I'm, I'm scooped, but at the same time, not really. And at the same time, also like the full version of my my vision would be 
it would be such a huge amount of work to do. And I feel like it's probably going to be, you know, it's something that I'm always going to have a part of in my hand in, but maybe a very incremental um, development. And that's okay. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ever, Frontier Maps itself is like the umbrella concept of all everything. Like, 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 uh, a survey of computational model of cognition is like a subset of that. Like, like, like you can put everything that, in, that, that there's so much that, 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 that Frontier Maps would totally, like, it's an impossible thing to do even, even as one person. Like, maybe, maybe that's something I would do is, like, I would put out a call for proposal and say, hey, do people want to go in on this, this topic with someone from cognitive science or psychology? That's something I could do in the future. Um, or, or, you know, inside or outside of the lab, too. But there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff in that sense to, to draw from and, and, you know, maybe working with uh, Andre himself. I haven't said his name right yet. I don't remember. I, I, I've lost all name comprehension from this week uh, because I just met and talked to and interviewed so many people. So I'm fully uh, face flight from that. Um, yeah. Anyhow, uh, lots of things to take away from, but I want to I keep moving because there's just so much stuff. Um, so before we get to the technical stuff, I want to do one more dip into the amazing, 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 highly recommended resistance AI. Um, I feel like resistance AI is the culmination of everything. Like you had queer and I, Latin and AI, black and AI. Um, and I have to just like list, you know, uh, I don't know, demographic categories. Uh, and, and make it seem light, but like res I feel like I feel like resistance AI is the most um, it really got to the nuts and bolts of what can you do in your career, either in computer science or away from computer science. Um, that's going to be a factor and stuff. And I'll bring this up again. Like, like, how are you going to do it? Like, you have people that have been fired from Google AI ethics team who, who, who tried to hang on, you know, and didn't. And same thing. You mentioned, um, like, I mentioned this tweet. Uh, I found, I, did, I didn't really know who Liz Fong was. I found her on Twitter. Here it is. I, I mentioned this tweet, um, uh, and you know she stayed. She stayed on for a long time too, and, and she had her own resignation thing from Google. And I'm not trying to you know dunk on Google and, and, and make Google look bad or anything here. I'll probably go through my, my Twitter thing too, just because of that. Um, nope. But like, um, uh, also by the way, shout out for. Friggin' AI debate two, which looks amazing. Like it was just Joshua and and Marcus last year. It's gonna be all these people next time. Like, oh, yeah. That looks amazing. Uh, but that that's 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 like a you know a holiday fun to look forward to later this year. Oh, but yeah. um, um, oh, I can't find the tweet. There's so many. Just been so much stuff going on. Um, but. Also, I wish Rashad was here because uh, he was involved in the Women in AI, which I got to do a little bit of. I didn't think I even mentioned that in my notes, um, but he he um, he did some some very good stuff with that. Uh, anyway, I seem to be missing it here, but um, I mentioned I mentioned this tweet, and Liz Wong actually um, commented on or liked or something, so. I know her and Timmet are, you know, still fighting a good fight, uh, so to say. This panel is great. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do it justice here and talking about this stuff, but um, these are some comments from the chat. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Um, really, really us and, and hard talk too, like, like reflecting on yourself and who, who are you serving and what are you trying to do if you're trying to be, you know, 
uh, quote unquote woke, but also just someone who's a, an active participant in this process. What like what are, what are we trying to do? Um, and, and really, really good, really good talks and conversation about this. Uh, personally, um, when I mentioned law and ethics and stuff, and one of my collaborators, uh, this paper was super exciting. Um, I asked, I asked in my question, I don't think I pull it up here actually. I asked, um, let me see all my stuff here. Okay. Um, where to go? Here. I asked a question about, uh, about trying to find regular ways of balancing some of the regulation and, and uh, risk here. Oh, here's here's the tweet that I mentioned that was like, um, yeah, I, I, I mentioned I'm looking for, more to go. I mentioned looking for a project on how to balance risk and accountability for those who are steering the world and these powers. So collecting these resources were important. And that, that's where this was, um, this came up as, as a framework. So um, this this reorienting the study of algorithmic fairness for our of power. Um, I haven't fully read this paper yet, obviously, um, but this is this is exciting stuff that I look forward to looking into. And I, I it, it's not something I talk about here much in the lab, but I obviously have a passion project for the AI ethics and 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 how it's going to be used because I think how how technology is being used and how risk is balanced or imbalanced as we continue to use more and more AI technology is going to be a significant factor. Not just AI, but like who's at risk and who's basically absolved from risk behind, you know. It's kind of like the, uh, it's like another take on the, uh, I can't say it right, but uh, the Latin phrase for um, like, does, does this money stink? Acuna something est. Um, it was like, you know, the, it goes back to Roman times when it's like, oh, you got all this money from taxing people for building sewers. How could you take money from that? And, and I was like, well, does this money stink? And it's like, no, it doesn't. It's just, it's just money. But at the same time, it's sort of this concept of, you know, as things are monetized and, and kind of innocent, digitized, there's, there can be less and less connection to the source. And... Uh, I think it's an important thing to be looking at in terms of, well, we have these great tools that can just, you know, black box and whatever, and they're just like, okay, well, you know, how how do we, things have to be tied to something, otherwise, you know. I'll leave it at that. Anyway, um, uh, many great panels, uh, many great speakers. I can't even try to do this justice. Go check out the Resistance AI Workshop. That's what I'll say about that. Okay, and then for the rest of now, unless there's any other comments or talking about things, um, uh, with one exception of, I don't think ever did proper justice to, thank you so much, Charlotte. Uh, wow, well, I've made a lot of stuff here. And all these other people. Here we go. This one shout out again. Thank you, Charlotte, for making this happen. Um, giving us the space to do this. This was also Friday. Uh, Friday was, again, quadruple book. Busy for me, but we still did this. It was fun. And a lot of good interdisciplinary talk. We had some good questions. <clears throat> um, Charlotte brought up some really good stuff about uh, different whether or not people's views about things agree or 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 um are able to see the same thing and how that affects stuff and i feel like it's a really interesting amount of questions um bradley's thank you for your talk it was very good so just yeah. a little shout out to that um yeah the, all the recording should be available soon and then you know maybe we can follow up on it because there was a lot of there are a lot of things in that talk that Sort of, a, you know, I, I gave an overview of sort of some philosophical issues, and but then I also talked about some of the work that we've got going on in the lab group. So, you know, those are those are tied together. It's like, how do you advance your work? You know, you go out and you give talks and you write papers and you do research, but then you have to kind of follow up on it, and that's 
So we'll probably be following up on that soon. Well, um, speaking about following up on stuff, uh, we'll get to our sort of juicy stuff. I took a bunch of notes on this one in particular. If I can find the talk here, too. Um, I can't believe it's not better. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, is this it? Uh, no. Just tell me the door is not. Yeah. It should be... Nope, that's not in there. Mm-hmm. Nope, that was a good talk, too. But, uh... Oh, it's right here on the right. 20 hours... Yeah, right there. Uh, all right. Cool. So, um... Basically, this talk had to do with... Yeah, the abstract's pretty good, as it is. Um, uh, in so many words, um... In so many words, I would say this talk is kind of just about embodiment. Mm. One of the recurring themes between this talk and Dave Mike's talk um, and another embodiment talk is uh, there, there was such great debate at this conference about the role and necessity of embodiment and intelligence. Like, I don't know if it's because I'm actually aware to it and can understand this now. Uh, which is probably the case since I'm very new to this stuff. But the way, like, to step back and zoom out for a little bit, the role of embodiment um, and intelligence was just really wonderfully on display from many different angles. Um, you had people who were much more on the lines of embodiment as a central and irreconcilable part to, to maintaining, even going forward, to superhuman intelligence. And you have people who say, no, it's not the case at all. Like, as we generalize, as we get away from embodiment, we won't need uh, the, these sort of, these innate, basically, basically one of the debate points is, can these biological innates or presets that embodiment sort of represents, according to some, be turned into, you know, co- 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 can, can they be basically made computational? Like, and just, just simulated by, you know, structuring a network a certain way or structuring certain, you know, uh, priors or, 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 you know, some, some hard wiring or, or uh, symbolic structures, you know, contextual or otherwise, um, you know. So this talk was very good in the sense of, uh, he, he, he really gets, he, he highlights this, this bottleneck. Um, and, and he, he says, uh, he, he gets at the point of cleverness is kind of relative. And like, are we really that clever? But what, what are our, um, what is, what does our embodiment do for facilitating our, basically giving us the right for this is to be intelligent, I would say. He didn't say that, but I, 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 would, I would put it that way. Um, like, like this, this is kind of a structural thing. Like, is this, is this us being intelligent, or is this our biology allowing us to do this connectivity here? Um, he talks about Morbid's paradox. Um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I really like this quote of, Billions of years and experiencing of experiencable nature has some happened. I feel like that's. I feel like this is so essential to talk about embodiment and, and, and biological and human level artificial intelligence well, uh, because we don't we don't really talk about this. And I, I feel like it's important. I think people would. I think it's really important to see like after kind of my if, if there's anything from the last year of my growth is understanding all this stuff. Like the big board debate is, okay, this, you have to accept this. And everybody, everybody like in a baby mind panel accepted this, this stuff about 
biology. Like this is true. This is sort of the case. The question is, how much of this do we need going forward as we have less embodied and potentially more generalized views of intelligence? And I'd really like to see, uh, like the AI debate too, where Rich Sutton's there and asking about a bit of lesson about this and how he sees that fitting in. And, and these kind of things, but like, you know, in, in the panel, um, in the Big Mind Workshop panel, um, here, uh, Gary Marcus kind of pushed, like, there were Gary Marcus on the side of, like, well, you know, there's, there's no doubt this is the case. Like, this is, this is true. Like, this is the case. But it may not have to be the case going forward in terms of, how much embodiment do we need? Like that's something that I rephrased the question at, in that session too. Um, and so to, to continue with this, you know, the final night talk, um, there was a really good. He, he kind of criticizes uh, Yon Lacoon's cake and unsupervised learning, but I didn't get the. There's a follow-up slide. Maybe I can just really try to quickly find it here. Without it being really nice. There's a follow-up slide about the cake. Um, which was, uh, I don't know how to quite convey it without seeing it, so maybe not. Um, but it was very relevant to stuff. The, uh, I highlight this, this is definitely a question. Uh, Josh Trapendio, who you may know, um, had a question for Tony. Detailed innate structure may be greatly helpful to be operational at birth that's for sure. But it may also lead to less adaptability to changes in the environment compared to species which rely more on learning, like mammals, primates, humans. So we want to build a walking machine, your argument may be good, but we want to build a more general form of intelligence. Hang on. The, 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 the learning route may well be most appropriate. What do you respond to the argument? And I feel like this is. I, I, I highlighted this because um, some of our group that works in the lab is, is kind of about about this uh, and starting to explore how do we look at these different developmental periods, like at, at birth, and what what kind of, there's a certain amount of structure that needs to be in place for any agent or system to function. Like, it has to be an inside or an outside. It's very fundamental. But you know, what layers are innate and, and self-imposed limitations and structures biologically or neurologically or whatever? What what part do they play in things? And where? What are the limitations of them? Um, and, and how could that change in different periods? Like, like, I really, when I first heard Bradley talk about developmental freedom, I'm like, oh, geez, I don't, that sounds kind of like a weird concept. But I feel like, yeah, in the context of this here, and I'm not going to explain it very well right now, uh, so probably you can if you want to, but like, I would say the limitations on freedom, uh, where, where do you put it here? Uh, mm, I am. There's no way I could I could I could parse this, but what I would say is, when it, there are certain guidelines that that structure both development and then at what stage in development it is. Like like human beings have a very long, you know, period of developing. And, and, you know, like the, the, the saying of, like, your brain doesn't really stop fully all of your life. And you have all these different hormonal changes go in your teens and, and cognitive abilities develop in different weeks and months and so on. And I feel like one of the debates here, and going back to what I was saying about, about the original opening quote uh, from here, is, okay, well, what, you know, Yash was kind of saying, what level are we aiming for and how much is embodiment? Or, or these related structures uh, pertinent 
too constraining. Like if you're constraining a walking machine, yes, um, it's very dependent on these. If, 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 you can almost do a counter argument saying, <clears throat> um, well, you could have the most advanced um, computer in the world and, 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 and AI system attached to this robot, but, but if you, you know, if you don't, if, if you set the legs the wrong way, like, it, it's just going to be inefficient and it's going to waste time in developing. When you just set the legs in a more appropriate way, structurally and anatomically correct for walking or running or whatever, you know, Boston Dynamics stuff, then, you know, you don't, if you set the legs the right way, it's not something you ever have to spend time thinking about again, relative to the purpose of it. And I think that the question is, okay, well, if we're talking purely about the neocortex and, and development and the high level stuff that we want to do, more generalized intelligence, how much, you know, the point of the debate is where does that cough come from? Um, I don't know if you want to say anything about developmental freedom. <laughs> in that but, yeah, it's old. Um, well, I mean, it, there's a lot to unpack. Like even just me thinking about like you know what was going on this week. But yeah, so I mean, my my take on developmental freedom is so they're missing a couple things in this conception of development. Uh, one of that is the way I I guess we can think of developmental freedom is to have sort of a morphogenetic phase where you're building a network from essentially scratch. It could be like a single cell, it could be, what I talked about yesterday in the talk. So we start with a very simple topology, it could be a ring, or it could be like just a single neuron, an inner neuron between a sensor and an effector. And then we grow that out and that's the morphogenetic process. So, you know, you've got these changing inputs is changing you know, basically the agent is taking in information for the first time and you're actually using some sort of genomic encoding you're building giving instructions to build this network up so you're going from like a genomic program to neurons saying like okay we're going to put this many neurons into a topology and then we're going to build this network and then at some point that stops and then that from then on you have the connections you know so when you get these neurons that are being built up you get connections but the connections are pretty much you know uh, 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 I, I guess they're just kind of uh, ad hoc they don't really form any long-lasting uh, connections so they're just very random in terms of their connectivity and how they're activated and then you stop growing the network. And then once you stop growing the network, you start to get, you get no more uh, capacity in terms of neurons or in terms of connections. The connections now are sculpted in some way that, you know, make long, longer lasting connections. And, and some are, the weaker ones are removed permanently and you get this sort of permanent network. The developmental freedom part is where you have this fixed network, fixed in the terms of the number of cells but this freedom to uh, sort of refine these connections. And so, you know, I see this in terms of, I think we talked about this in the uh, talk at, um, at Neuromatch in terms of like the critical period or that there's a critical period where things change rapidly. And then, you know, that, that gives you the sort of the grist for your developmental freedom. And so if you put the, you know, if you place the, uh, a critical period early in the process you get a longer free period of developmental freedom if you put it later in the process you get a shorter period of developmental freedom now what does that afford you well, it affords you a couple things for one it gives you this longer period of learning so the period of learning when it's longer it tends to maybe give you things that are more highly refined uh, so it gives you a longer time to search that network for the optimal sort of strong connections, weak connections. Maybe it gives you more structure in your in your network. Uh, a shorter uh, develop period of developmental freedom would give you something that, you know, it, it gives you less time to really explore that network. So it's being refined, but only up to, uh, for a shorter period of time. So you're probably not likely to find, say, the optimal set of connections 
but you do have, the, you know, you can also have, what you'll tend to have are like sort of innate connections that carry over into an, an adult form. So, you know, this is what you see with some animals is you see, um, you know, sometimes they're innate connections. Like in C. elegans, the nervous system is largely innate connections or in social insects, but, you know, there's still some plasticity. Uh, on the other hand, you have other uh, organisms like a lot of mammals where you have a high degree of plasticity and development. And with humans, there's an extreme amount of plasticity, but there are other organisms, you know, that do actually, they have a pupil stage where they build a nervous system and a body, and then it breaks down about midway through the life history and it reconstitutes itself in, in another form. So if you uh, think about like butterflies, caterpillars, butterflies, and they have this cocoon phase, the caterpillar has a certain uh, you know, nervous system configuration as a certain uh, morphological configuration. Then they go into this cocoon where there's some decellularization. So the, the cells are basically broken down into this, uh, you know, population of stem cells that, that then reconfigure themselves into the butterfly. So there are a lot of ways to do this. I actually have another paper uh, on uh, heterochrony, and I, I talk about that in that paper about like modeling um, these type of metamorphic phases and so that might be interesting too from that standpoint where you're actually taking develop going one path uh, down developmental lane and then you're shifting <laughs> through this uh, uh, through this cocoon stage and then you're coming back from another angle so there are a lot of ways to do this um, I, I I don't know I mean like I think they they had a lot of interesting things in development, but I don't know if they, um, yeah, there's a lot to explore. It's not like, <laughs> it's not an easy path. There probably could be a whole conference on developmental AI, uh, just yeah. trying different approaches, so. Definitely. Um, and I guess I'll try to quickly go through stuff. There's like yeah. this stuff over overflow. Um, uh, I, I mentioned Lisa Feldman Barrett, and I felt very proud of myself for doing so because they were talking about optimization. And I'm like, well, you know, I, I basically cited her for saying human you know, brains are evolved to control in their bodies. And I think, again, going back to the point of, you know, what if, if an intelligent agent didn't have to control in the body, what would its nervous system and, and, and structural look like? I think that's that's a that's a very theoretical question, but also part of you know the the AGI dream that kind of fits under that. Yeah, I think um, that's I, essential because it basically is co-evolved. So you wouldn't expect like a human brain to do very well controlling an insect. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, and I feel like uh, yes, but I have to move on. I. I <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, to the ending ending of genomic bottleneck talk by Tony Zador, uh, he basically kind of uh, he's, he 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 takes a position of it's not learning. Um, it's that we find a way to escape with the bottleneck. Uh, we 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 got this from cultural transmission, from cultural from oral transmission, from written transmission learning, teaching, education, sharing with others. Um, Andrew Sandberg might say, uh, exo brains, uh, getting outside of yourself. I, I would I would note, I kind of like the idea of, you know, you're, off short, you're, you're outsourcing and crowdsourcing um, computational power. Like, like, I don't have to remember everything written in this book. Somebody else put it in there. I just go look at the book and then, whoo, I, I learned. Wow, it's amazing. I didn't make the book, I didn't write the book, I didn't make the language, I didn't do any of this stuff. But I have access to the goods, the wisdom that's in that book. Or, this talk, that one right now, how about that? Um, but you know, like, um, the summary is very good here. Um, in a structure, in a learning, uh, he, he really, he really, he, he did a very good job of parsing away, okay, what is actually learning versus what is structure and, and what is the bottleneck and how have we got past that? 
and 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 and, and maybe to, to, to even do more favors uh, to the viewpoint, uh, try to say it's learning is only so much of the component. Like we talk about artificial general intelligence as, as this, this this isolated. Oftentimes, not always, you know, this like you know, throw back to. Uh, Throw back to uh, the Forbin project. You know that movie? It's a very old movie. I think so. Uh, it, 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 it's when they made this, like, the, the, the USA made this, it's like, super AGI thing, and the, the USSR made one too. <laughs> and they were, like, keeping each other in check, and then, like, they started making all language and talking to each other, and they took over the world or whatever. <sighs> so, you know, that's, you know, that was some, some cultural transmission between themselves, uh, and that took them to the next level. But I'm kind of being a little, you know, I'm speaking lightly here, but um, um, I, I think his talk is is a great talk representing the viewpoint of what really is learning and intelligence. So I'm going to talk about this AGI dream, the HAL 9000, all this agent that just knows everything, all these supercomputers, like, you see in many, like, you know, we see these, these super agents that just know the om, om, omnipotent and, and omniscient, all knowing, all present, and all powerful. Like in reality, you know, this is huge. Like this, this cultural transmission is is huge. It's not just having a gigantic IQ in in in, in a robot. Like, that's not really what it's about. So I think his talk is really good at that point. Um, and I think he concluded with this. This is a cool thing to end on. And the brain is so simple, we could understand it. We wouldn't be, we would be so simple that we couldn't. Uh, which is very meta. Um, and you can think about that more on your own time. Um, great Q&A. There's a whole, I'm going to go through the entire Q&A in the rocket chat. Because uh, there was, Huge good stuff here. I'll just read this for now, uh, and get eventually to Friday. The, and ask me anything in, in the rocket chat for Tony's the door and the question that came up and his openness to talking to other people. Um, that just that was just, that was so fun. Thursday night was so fun, and Friday was super busy and so fun. Like that, that was awesome. And there's stuff today going on that's so great and and. I may not even get to today because I'm sober and I have all the stuff to do today, but 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 Saturday looks awesome too. We're talking about the resistance workshop. Baby Minds workshop. The, uh, Baby Minds and there's another one today, there's another one that is really on here, but Baby Minds and all representation and raising me machine learning. I'm actually gonna do this one first because I spent less time here, but I showed up for this super good panel. Yasha Benjo, Kainan. Henry Coutts, who, who I don't know as much. Do you know as much about, do you know these two people at all? Uh, I've never, never heard of them, no. I, I I know a little bit of them, but I don't know enough to say about them very well. And obviously Gary Marcus is kind of everywhere. And Francesca Rossi was really good. Um, she's, she's. Uh, I really like her work uh, on the AI and, and AI ethics in general. Um, I think this talk, I forgot who said this. This is a good question that came up during the panel. Um... Uh, and I don't remember anything about it right now. But there, were, there was a great, a great set of questions about this. I think this is when I started using Otter.ai to to collect some stuff, uh, which was really good. But the panel was very good. Uh, let me see if I can quickly find a Twitter thing from it because I took. Uh, this is a great talk uh, from the Big Mind Workshop. Here's the panel. Um, uh, did I say anything here? Uh, no. I don't think I have any good commenting. But this is a really good, just to put the abstract here. Um, machine learning, tremendous representation, power and the drawbacks. Um, Symbolic approaches for knowledge representation and reasoning, KRR, are less prominent today than they due to a lack of scalability, but their strength lies in the verifiable and interpretable reasoning that can be accomplished. So the goal of this workshop and, and kind of you know part of what the panel is about is um, 
combining these two things, machine learning and knowledge representation and reasoning. Uh, uh, it was, it was uh, uh, you know, Kahneman is, is the Systems 1, Systems 2 guy, and, and people will often reference this to keep finding ways to come back to you know, consciousness, subconscious, and, and, and slower and faster uh, thinking, uh, as you would say. Um, and there's just, it was a very good, it's very quick, in a sense, but a very good summary, or maybe it's probably the end of it. Very good summary, and I'll mention it quickly there, and move along to uh, maybe my stuff. Because there's a lot of overlap between Gary Marcus was here, and also Gary Marcus at the David Brian's panel, um, and Josh had his own talk, uh, Josh Tenenbaum, and I'll go through these pretty quickly. Uh, Oliver Brock, this talk is great. Um, they have the slides, curious they do. Uh, really, really, really good talk, really uh, pro embodiment, and all embodiment and development. Um, I wish I could take away the arrows because they're kind of cumbersome, but his talk was really good um, and, and very much someone who understands at, at a deeper level and, and is playing around with many things um, in the body. And he, he, really, he really comments on um, the panel as well. Um, this is one of the... Uh, this was a cool concept. Um, uh, I think it's one of the in, contributor talks that they selected to have a talk from uh, students. Um, the uh, architecture agnostic neural networks, which kind of fits in with some of our talk about, you know, what is the needs for embodiment. But but they they were using uh, a, a, an interesting way to to represent. Um, connecting neural networks together, um, and, and they use these. I don't have the slides here. Uh, um, where do I? Uh, no, I'll, but I'll, uh, that was very good. Um, I'm not. I'll just show you one. Here are all the papers, uh, or posters, all the papers. Um, I might go through them individually. I know we, we have like I know 20 minutes or less left, so I, I kind of just want to get to. Yeah. Um, the other stuff. Uh, this is good. This is good. Um, the developmental theory of mind by Angelo. Angelo, these are the two. These are the two last talks of, of the workshop, and they were kind of uh, some of the best. Like, like, well, you know, highlights maybe. Everything was very good. Um, uh, Angelo had uh, an interesting, very hands-on, very, 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 very literally embodied robotics take on on all this stuff. Um, so it was really good to see that. Um, and he talked about you know what is the ecology, studies ecology. I forgot what this one is. Um, all the stuff in robotics, developmental theory of mind. He went back to that. Um, the kind of you know object prominence and 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 and, and, uh, and he he bridges into how it fits with human interaction, uh, trust and in, in human interaction too, which is pretty good. Um, do I have anything here? Yeah, just to plug the data mine workshops. Uh, this is the actual homepage for the, the site. Um, be sure to check it out. Um, I think I'm out of the cool slides there, but uh, it was very good. I recommend, I, I recommend this talk. And then Josh returned on the talk. Um, I met him a lot. Um, this was good. I, 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 I've seen this talk a lot. I've seen this talk maybe like four times this year. But, it, but what I, well, there was some really important new stuff that I haven't seen this time. Um, like, I think this is a very similar thing about um, in, in our lab. Uh, intuitive physics, that's kind of the ADEPT uh, training test. That was a, that's a very interesting uh, 
I think it's basically gauging surprise. Uh, like the agent, how surprised it was when, when the ball disappeared or when the ball wasn't there after the thing, after I went behind the, uh, the screen. Um, I think I'll come back to that later. The Tudor Physics Engine and this paper, the Utility Calculus. I mentioned that here. Understanding social interactions. The, there's a whole set of uh, papers and, and projects here. Um, uh, and some of the more recent work, uh, this has been interesting to look at. Um, I think one of the students, Rose, Rose Wang, is working on this. Um, in terms of their chefs in the kitchen uh, and, and having empathy for different models. Being able to understand what, like, like in this case, it's not really very interesting to see, but there's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of balls on the table. And, and in this case, this guy comes around and wants to take this, this ball and, in, you know, is this, this woman going to help him get to the ball, will she pick it up and hand it to him so he doesn't have to go there? Or before he gets to the ball, will she take it away? And and that kind of creates this um, empathy and sense of okay, is this are this is is this other agents um, is the goals are the goals and, and needs of this other agent something that I'm incorporating into my own um, values as a good thing, or am I am I labeling it as a negative and a bad thing? And, you know, is it a reward? Is it is it, is it, is it a negative? Um, so I mean, that that's uh, a lot not a lot coming out in this this work on things. Um, Tutor psychology. Uh, uh, all this stuff here. The hard problem of learning. Um, as you mentioned here, has to do with uh, the the space of the problem is is much more irregular. Um, it's not just as as a uh, as uh, Gary Marcus said. Um, he, he he has a phrase apparently. Life is not a cattle competition, so a lot of, a lot of the um, the challenges of what experiments to do and where you draw salience from what you're trying to look into. Um, uh, and this was, this is a really interesting slide to think about. Um, and I want to look at one of these papers. Uh, Cobble learners, uh, few shot metal learners. I really want to look at the few shot metal learners. I'm kind of comparing notes with that and uh, Megan Peters' work on metal learning and cognition. Um, I don't know if she's on that paper or not. I don't sound foolish. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of overlap with some of Gary Marcus and uh, Gerken's work here. But it's these very simple um, grammar or syntactical structures. These, these structures um, in, in, in learning and what age the, it, they're developed in, in, in children. Um, this was a cool... Um, I really like this because it kind of brought in... I forgot what it, what it was specifically called, um, but uh, basically training the, the motion patterns and how from the motion patterns you can extrapolate the actual finalized results. Um, and I feel like, you know, that kind of gets a little bit into good selling information and, and, and not really necessarily, but we're kind of moving towards the end of incorporating this movement over time and in 3D space. Um, and then, be able to what kind of information that 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 can tell you, um, and how that how that the, that density of that information can affect you know. If you're able to take all the information in, as opposed to just a bunch of pixels, or, or at least have a space of being able to represent and understand um, what 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 that is, uh, that's an interesting thing. Um, he mentioned the child's hack that has come up many times in his talk. Uh, dream Coder, which is coming up next. Um, yeah, Dream Coder paper, which I want to take a deep dive into. That's a recent thing that he put out an archive this year. Uh, using these uh, uh, wake and sleep Bayesian program learning, which I don't really know what to say about that. But sort of what's happening in, in waking and sleep phases being simulated here, sort of. Um, and this general overview was great. Uh, the panel was awesome. 
Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, I, I took full recordings of the panel. Um, and I'm going to go over them. Um, I may... I'll see if I can highlight anything right now. Uh, if I did, it probably actually probably put it up later. Uh, I mentioned the cap competition. That's a nice, you know, sound bite. Uh, I really like the way this was said. Uncertainty about the affordances of objects. And this came up when Gary was talking about um, development and his children who were you know, six or seven years old or something like that. And how uh, a lot of development, and this even maybe goes back to uh, Tony Zador's point about is it really learning? Like, are you, is it learning so much as it is learning about these affordances? Um, and, and what, how, I don't really know how to talk about learning about affordances. Um, and is that, is, is affordances really just sort of, is learning about affordances kind of just matching to usability or, 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 or what, you know, um, things that you can do and just matching, does this match in a very, it, it is, it's uncertainty about forces basically the equivalent of um, a, a very binary trial and error of, can I do this with like, uh, you know, yes or no, um, and, and how does that fit with development? Um, so that, that was something, uh, I put out a collection of, of, of links and information from this tweet. Is there anything interesting from this? Um, no, I think that was it. There, there's, I, I feel this. Uh, I, I wish I had. I wish I had some specific highlights to draw from about the panel. I'm gonna look really quickly at my notes, um, but. Any questions or comments while I do that? No, I actually, I, I uh, also am kind of interested in delving into um, naive learning. Uh, talked about that a bit in different contexts, but not like in this. So, I mean, yeah, we might talk about that at a future meeting as well. Um, also, if you have videos or a video artifacts, uh, we have a private collection for the lab. It's like an internal uh, yeah. space to put those if people want to view them. I have some videos from other places that I keep, so I can I can tell you where that to put that when the time comes. If you want to share that with other people who aren't here, yeah. Um, uh, I'll just say. And I'm trying to, my mind is like so wiped from all things I'm trying to remember right now. But um, the panel was. Uh, can I just pull it up here? The panel for Baby Minds. Uh, um, uh, will have any information here? No, it doesn't. That sucks. Um, I just, I would just say it was very good. Um, I'm not gonna play it, but like, uh, oh, you can see some of my chats up here. Yeah. There was a really funny joke, uh, about, um, Basically, Gary went into a, a, you know, a, I don't know if it was his, his thing or he copied somebody else, but he, he had a phone case, like, oh, what is this object? And talking about affordances, oh, and it'd be like, like a phone case for a cell phone that had kind of holes in it, but it looked like you could hold water. And say, oh, can I drink from it? And, and, uh, Josh was like, oh, depends on how drunk you are. And then, it, you know, it, it, you know, if you think you can drink from a phone case or not. And it was, it was a very, it was a very funny thing. Um, and and uh, the it was kind of the end of the day. You know, one of the big things, one of the, one of the big, as I kind of mentioned earlier today, was was 
how much environment is necessary. Um, I, I think that sums up a lot of what this talk was about. And it, you, know, you can kind of substitute priors and, and innate things and, and kind of wrap them in an in, in embodiment altogether. Um, but uh, it, it was, there were interesting points on different sides of the debate. Like you had, you had um, Oliver Brock, who was you know kind of in the pro embodiment camp. And everybody's like, no one's really anti embodiment. It's just to what degree, and what what can be done without it, um, and trying to do trying to, to, to speculate along those lines and do things. There's another um, Angela was also uh, you know as, as a roboticist and then someone who's very interested in in, in real world activity. Um, he, I think there was a really good balance in the panel of people who were kind of heavier into uh, the necessity of embodiment, and then you know Gary's pretty good at, at, at doing the being an antagonist in a positive way for a lot of stuff, um, and so uh, I, I think I think it was just a great debate, and, and I will I will share the I, I, th I think I basically have transcripts of this. Because I, I was able to record the the audio and the words from it, um, but I don't have anything more, like really fun to talk about it, other than um, very very good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, anything else that was a rush two hour recap with so much more overflowing and so much more still to do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think we might, yeah, we might talk about maybe some of this next week as well. We might revisit this if you could, yeah. yeah. Uh, in, a maybe, much more, in a much more digestible format when I can make, like, nicer notes and, and flesh out things. Because this is, like, totally just the roughest of rough notes. Yeah. As you know. But, you know, it was, it was a fun weekend. So I'm glad to be fun with this one. Yeah. That was a great overview, actually. Because I think we, I think it's, like, a lot of, you know, you kind of put things down and, and, you know, you see where the lay of the land is. So maybe next week we'll think more about like strategizing around some of these things. Like what what is it? What are some of the important points that we can build on, or you know, for uh, not just for like formal papers, but just kind of conceptually in that. So, I think the timing for this is awesome. Between this and also like, I think between if I if it was a pre suggestions, but like. The next couple of weeks between now, it's not even a couple of weeks, like the AI debate is like two, less than two weeks away, holy crap. Um, it would be good to, to kind of go over stuff here and I don't know if we're going to have time, but in, in an ideal world, to kind of go over stuff here, finish some of our graduate applications, on my end, but go over some stuff here and then do what we're talking about with some proposals and ideas for the lab and kind of integrate them with what coming from here and then also put them, you know, or at least have them in mind when we watch the AI debate at the end of the year and then have maybe take, you know, a few weeks of really processing all that stuff and figuring out, you know, because there's stuff from, I didn't, even, I didn't highlight this, but like, I want to get more into, I mentioned the nonlinear dynamics course, but also probabilistic programming, uh, which is, you know, pretty high level stuff, but I'd like to get some more experience in that, which, which is, you know, a big part of what uh, Tenenbaum's doing, um, and, and just getting to familiar with those tools and equipment and the projects that we have. Um, like, there are ways to ramp up into very easily into, like, Google Summer Code project ideas and say, hey, you want to look on these really high level stuff in the summer, you know, we could be fleshing that already. So there's so much stuff to to integrate with what we have and I have like I just, I have better ways of thinking about what I'm trying to do now for sure. So um, I have some ideas and I'm really curious. I think there'll be stuff to talk about all that this week about how to, you know, um, how you want to direct this in the lab. Yeah. Uh, because there's, there's a lot, a lot of fruit to pick at here. Yeah.
Yeah, there is. Well, thanks for uh, sharing that. I think that'll be good. And hopefully people on YouTube will, you know, when, when they see this, they'll think about it. And then next week we'll talk in more depth, maybe about strategizing. We'll get, you know, uh, maybe we'll digest the notes a bit more and we'll have those notes available for people to look at. Uh, and then think about it some more. So uh, I think this is, I like this note-taking strategy. I like it. Um, you know, it's a work in progress, but it's helping. Yeah. Work. Yeah. The, 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 uh, definitely. Like, there's no way that if I did this any other way, and even with your help, it's about helping other people on this process too. It just wouldn't, this isn't the most coherent. This is obviously not a finished thing here, but like the fact that it's pretty well sorted out, and I can go back and I, as I got better and smarter as the week went along, obviously, uh, I started putting, I started linking specific things in the right spots and having better categories and titles. And I feel like that's definitely the way to handle this. And a lot of, a lot of other labs are doing this sort of thing too, so it's kind of like it's becoming more popular and people having these group documents in general. And it's definitely. Great, and so we kind of have a bunch of raw material here. We can refine it and, and make some things, and whether it's you know some helpful blog posts or like you could do whole recaps of just a workshop. Um, so maybe we'll do things like that too. Depends. Mm, yeah, sounds good. I'm ready to not talk for two hours straight about nerves and then yeah. <laughs> check the last few hours of nerves anyway. So yeah, uh, thanks for listening, to me Ramble, and. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I let me let me know what you want to do in Slack and all that. Oh yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So yeah, we'll, we'll catch up in Slack for things and uh, have a good week and uh, see everyone next week. Yeah. See everyone next week. Thanks for watching. Take care. Uh -huh.